Well, good evening, everybody. I just wanted to do a, a brief video about scratch building. What is scratch building? Well, simply put, scratch building is building a model of a building or a freight car or a locomotive, a ship, an airplane, essentially from scratch, building it yourself. It seems intimidating, but it's not. Um, there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube about how to go about scratch building model railroad structures. And if you're interested in doing this, I highly recommend you check out some of those videos. Now, the reason I like scratch building is I find it in many cases easier to scratch build something because I'm building it myself than if I had bought a kit. Because oftentimes with a kit, I have trouble understanding the instructions and trying to figure out how to build the building versus just building it myself. Uh, another reason is the simple fact that there are so many things you can't buy in kit form. For example, the town of Cass, West Virginia, all my layout was completely scratch built. There are no commercial kits. So in that case, you have to scratch build. So I'll give you a few pointers that I use. Um, and then we will visit my friend Howard Zane, which is actually he's in the process right now of scratch building a structure. And we'll get his take on scratch building and get some pointers from Howard, too. So let me show you a few things on the layout. Now, this is the engine house at Cass, West Virginia, before it sadly burned down. I was very fortunate because I wanted to scratch build this structure, but it didn't exist. It had already been burned down when I decided I wanted to scratch build it. Now, there were a number of pictures that I studied. And I was getting ready to scratch build it. But I hit the jackpot, folks, because I met a fellow by the name of Richard Sparks, who has passed away, sadly. But he had a set of plans for this building, an actual set of plans. And I was able to scratch build this with an HO scale ruler from the plans. Every single wall, I knew how high to make it, how long to make it, and I was able to build it exact the size in HO scale. Now, in, in most cases, you're not going to have the luxury of obtaining plans. Now, this is the general store at Cass, West Virginia. My wife and I actually visited Cass, took photographs of the distance, the sides, all four corners, and we actually measured this building with a tape measure to get how long each segment of the building is, how wide the building came out, and essentially to get the dimensions of the building. Uh, people thought we were crazy measuring the building, but I had to do a little bit of explaining, and they understood that the measuring was going to be used to build a model of the structure. And this is the end result. Now, there's also something called kit bashing, folks. Kit bashing is... It's kind of like scratch building, but it's, it's a little bit different in that you take a whole bunch of different commercially available kits and you put them together to make a custom building or a big building. This great big water treatment facility uh, was kit bashed from a number of Walther's kits that I had put together to make a really large structure. Now, in the case of these magnificent Deer Park Inns, uh, the late Harry Clark scratch-built these. He not only scratch-built these, but he scratch-built the windows and the doors. Folks, when you normally scratch-build, you can buy windows and doors from Granite Line or from Titchy um, that would match the building that you're building, and they're commercially available, and it saves you a tremendous amount of time. Harry, being the perfectionist that he was, was not satisfied with any of the window and door openings, and he literally scratch-built the windows and doors. Now, he did not have a set of plans to this building, but he worked off of photographs, and he worked off of perspective. In other words, he knew that a door might be eight feet tall or seven feet tall, and that a person stands an average of six feet tall, and he was able to determine the approximate size of the building by using people 
as a scale. So if a person is a certain millimeter size in the picture, you can divide that up and do the math and come up with approximate size of how tall, how long, and how wide a building might be. In this case, he got it pretty close. Now, folks, here's a picture of the Oakland Inn. It was a B&O hotel in Oakland, Maryland, near Deep Creek Lake. I want to scratch build this. Now, um, you can draw up pictures and sketches full size to HO, and then you can make your doors and windows. A lot of times, though, I'll make cardboard mock-ups. This is a really crude cardboard mock-up that I made. Um, and it just gave me a, a crude, full-size cardboard mock-up that I was able to work with to ascertain the size and the dimension and the proportions. And after I did the mock-up, actually I did this mock-up five or six times, it fit the area perfectly that I had. And I laid the windows and doors out on the mock-up just to get a general idea of spacing and I'll be ready to build my version of this hotel. Now I had to shrink it down somewhat in size because it's such a large structure. Here's another example of a cardboard mock-up. This is going to be a really cool structure. It's going to be a series of structures. Uh, it's actually going to be three different buildings put together and I'm just making a really crude cardboard mock-up to go on the layout to get an idea of the proportions. How big is it going to be? Is it going to be too big? Is it going to be too small? Are the proportions correct? Does it line up with the scenery? Is everything correct? Once I do that, then I begin, I begin to build my version of the model. Now let's go over to Howard Zane's house and talk to Howard a little bit about scratch building and let's see what he's up to. Hey folks, we're over at Howard Zane's house and he is building a incredible structure that we're going to have available for sale. Let's take a look at it, Howard. Where is it behind you? Yeah, yeah, let me let me get up. And... It's uh, in the process of being built. Here, I'll flip it around. Oh my goodness. Part of the mess is uh, every time I straighten up, I can't find a damn thing. Oh, that's okay. Oh boy. This is all, it's all built out of basswood and then the covering is also uh, it's paper over basswood. Mm-hmm. It's the embo uh, embossed stone yeah. paper. And where I'm starting the ramps now, they'll be around. This, this is going to be a passenger station, actually. Oh, my this goodness. This will be the Shitanit station. What's it going to be called? Shitanit. Oh, wow. C-H-I-T-T-O-N-N-E-T. <laughs> Shitanit. It sounds like a house or a station or a uh -huh. town in Rhode Island. Wow. It actually means shit on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Folks, it'll be available. Mm -hmm. It'll be available for sale, mm -hmm. uh, and we will once it's done, mm -hmm. we'll shoot another video of the finished mm -hmm. structure and get you a price. But mm -hmm. Howard, since I'm building a structure at the same time of one of your designs, why don't you tell us about scratch building? Why is scratch building so fun and it's not as intimidating? A lot of people are intimidated by scratch building. Well, again, when you get back to the hobby, you always have two choices. Both begin with the word letter I: intimidate or inspire. Right. Okay. A lot of people spend too much time being intimidated. I can never do this. I can never do this. And what it boils down to, it's a lot easier than you think. Uh, I don't like building kits unless I really approve of the design. But it takes me hours to try to decipher what the kit manufacturer is trying to say. And usually I disagree with the guy afterwards. So why, why build a kit? So that's one reason. Scratch building also is a matter of economic, economics. Uh, you cost about maybe probably 20% of what the kit would cost. Right. The average craftsman kit today, if you can find them, the one you want, is uh, probably going to cost you $400. Right. And, and uh, the scratch build materials is not going to go over $70. Kit. Right. Maybe even less than that, probably 30 or 40 is more realistic. Right. Because I'm just using wood and wood strips and so forth. The other reason would be you get exactly what you want. And it's simple to do. I mean, I used to draw old spend like two or three hours doing drawings of these things mm -hmm. and now i spend maybe uh two minutes on a sketch like over here yeah let's see this, this sketch. Is a rough sketch of the um of the one i'm working on now mm -hmm. yeah this see how long did it take you to do that sketch exactly two minutes now see folks uh earlier you saw me doing a sketch and it took me about an hour and a half but no, that's the difference that's between just a rough, that's just a rough idea. 
Right. Wow, that's incredible. And then you start building it, mocking it up. That's all. We'll do it one section at a time, one wall at a time or one elevation at a time, then add the second and the third and the fourth. Right. And it goes together pretty well. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so people don't do this anymore. That's, uh, people don't build kits anymore. There was a time when the uh, people actually built stuff. Mm -hmm. And the hobby, if you really take advantage of what this hobby offers for a young person, every skill, I mean, seriously, every skill you will need to navigate life is found in this hobby, you know, mm -hmm. like electronics, uh, carpentry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can go on and on, but it's all there. Right. And uh, today, people are very happy to buy trains. They still build beautiful layouts. I mean, if you look at YouTube or whatever, you see gorgeous layouts, but all the structures, or most of the structures are plastic, ready to run, ready to plant, built up, and the cars are all plastic, and the locomotives are plastic or die cast. Right. And very, very... Rarely do you see a, a, a layout now that has scratch built structures. Wow. But if you try it, it's so friggin' easy to do. And my layout was fairly large. I'd say probably 90% uh, of the buildings are scratch built. Mm -hmm. and, and and you have something nobody else has, too, when you scratch oh, you build. Need this, yeah, but that's, that's, that's important, I guess. Right. Let's take a look at some of the paper and some of the brick that uh, you can buy commercially available, oh, stone, yeah. well, all, and brick. Stuff. Just do a search. I mean, I, I, this, is, uh, this is old. Let me just continue. This stuff here is yeah, made by like... Volmer years ago. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, brick. It's a little thick. It's sort of like a cardboard. And it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah. I've used this before. I used paper. Now back there, there's a whole pile of... Yeah, let's take a look at some of this, folks. Let me pause the video. You can see, you know what's nice about Howard's place is he's got... It's e but it's got every stick and every piece of strip wood and every window over here, folks. Remember I told you about Titchy windows and doors? Look at all the different ones he has in stock. Boy, I wish I had this. Yeah, um, more stuff than most hobby shops have ever have in a lifetime. Yep, and you know, you go online and you can pick which windows and which doors you like in the Titchy catalog and get your stuff together. It's nice because Howard can just walk over here and grab what he needs. So let me pause this and I'll show you some of the brick papers. All right, here we go. We found the paper. This is a small amount of the paper I have. I've got the, a stack of this stuff, probably this thick, mm -hmm. here, like this. And uh, this is a st I use for stone. This this comes out of Greece. And I wow. found this stuff on eBay. And I tried it, and it's really nice. It's embossed paper. Mm -hmm. It's a texture paper. And the uh, some of the stones are convex and others are concave, but it looks real. It's very realistic. You right. You glue it, and it, you can't tell. Right. If you get a, if you get an edge, for example, if you want to see that edge over here, and you got to because the paper is thick, so you get to see white. Mm -hmm. All you do is take a little bit of alcohol and the ink on the edge, and that's it. So right. right up. And you don't see it. Perfect job. You know, you can find stuff like this. This is for uh, uh, more for brick mm -hmm. the cornices and the overheads. And oh stuff, wow! Stuff like that. You found that on uh, eBay or yeah. mm -hmm. hobby shops don't really stock this. Uh, the Tommy Gilbert's has some of this stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, anyhow, this is what's, uh, what's available. And uh, a lot of the stuff I actually rather use regular wood. Right. Yeah, for clapboard and uh, scrap siding and so forth. Wow, this is really neat, folks. Mm -hmm. You can cut this out and glue it mm -hmm. on. Let's take another look at the building. Let's swing around and uh, just show you the stone and the brick again on the building. Look at uh, this collection of paints. Holy these, are gonna be, these are going to be easier by uh, pike stuff. The, the, the simple to build. Mm -hmm. This will be the stone this here. This, this will, as I said, this will be a station. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's finished. Wow, and here's... Mm -hmm close-up of the brick and a close-up of this and the dormers and the shingles and the shingles are mm. you just buy commercial shingle uh, no uh the shingles actually made by don reed oh really of, uh, i'll show you uh, this here cut it sells them like this it's all cut out and uh, i've got drawers and tons of these things and oh micro scale models micro scale models huh? yeah and uh you just uh here, take a knife and yeah it sort of goes on, but like Campbell, except this is so stick. Mm -hmm. Campbell is not. And you pull the backing off like that. Mm -hmm. And there she is, sticks, and it's not going to move. Wow. And it comes in all colors, or you can paint it. Right, right. and you just layer them yeah. on there. You exactly. start like a real roof. Always you start, start at the bottom. At the bottom. Always, Always start at the bottom and go one row at a time, mm -hmm. overlapping, until you're done. Mm -hmm. Well, Howard, thanks a lot. And the next time that uh, I show you this structure, it's going to be finished, and we will have a... 
price for the amount of the structure if you'd like to purchase it. Stay tuned. Well, we're back over Howard Zane's house today to show you the finished product of this beautiful station. I'm going to take all four sides. And it is for sale. It's not cheap, but it is spectacular. It's $2,500. And if you're interested in it, you can contact me at alpug1, that's A-L-P-U-G-1, at verizon.net for more information. But the structure is $2,500. And we can talk about various options to get it to you at that time. Let me go ahead and pause it and get some additional shots. All right, let me swing around. Just a beautiful, beautiful structure. Let me get the back shot for you. And the back looks just as beautiful as the front. It's just very well done. Let me zoom in on some, some lower details here. Uh, it's meant to be a passenger station, but it could be anything you want it to be. This is the back of the structure. And let me go ahead and try and turn it here so you can see the other side. These things glued into the layout. All right. will straighten out. Yeah, let me... Uh... There's the other side. And let's zoom down into the details on the the lower decks and let me pause it one more time yeah i'm gonna this is an upper view folks of the top of the structure and then i'll come down and we'll get some close-ups of the bottom oh boy look at that that looks fantastic wow again it's for sale twenty five hundred dollars Contact me at alpug1, A-L-P-U-G-1, verizon.net for more information. Thanks for watching.